The following program has been approved by this screaming child. Welcome to the show. I'm Nancy Guppy here at Georgetown Stables, and we have gone all out on this week's episode. Take a look. Seattle Opera's new digs. Jazz school for every level. The dreams are hard to give up. Mm -hmm. And so we want the people who uh, have the dreams that they're, they're not ready to give up, where it's time to get back to them. Living the artistic life. If there's anything that's been consistent in my life, it's my view on my art. And new music from Barrax. We'll kick off with Joan Engelmeyer, an artist and teacher who embodies the philosophy that living life and making art are pretty much one and the same. I'm Joan Engelmeyer, a painter and micro farmer, a city dweller, a coffee drinker, mom. If there's anything that's been consistent in my life, it's my view on my art and how it's necessary. I'm very dependent on making art. It's not really a choice anymore. I guess because I like to explore things completely from beginning to end, I work in series. Like I'll revisit swimming because I, I am a swimmer and I've done a series on people in elevators. Boxing is another one I always return to. And then I started doing felt. This series is called They, Them, and I wanted to do a traditional classical type bus, but with the wool. This gender idea lent itself to being a new way to look at an old thing. Each one of them has a very masculine side and at the same time very feminine. So the play should go back and forth as you're looking at it at one second you'll think well, that could be a, a male or that could be a female and I want to maintain that through the whole series. It's just important that we stay aware of being an individual not necessarily our gender. I'd do away with all gender if I could. In the third grade I had a teacher named Mrs. Schmidt I adored her. She was my art teacher in grade school. She kind of brought art as being a valid way to be in the world rather than some Michelangelo artist person that you would have to be this master. She was real. She was down to earth. She was in the grass. So it was really uh, positive for me to have her. My parents insisted that I get an education degree but I quit that. I didn't want to teach. I wanted to be an artist. That's what I did, kind of. And then I got married in 97. And then it all changed. <laughs> when I had my kids, then I had their friends, and then City Art Farm kind of was born. The first year, I just did a couple of private classes and just to get my feet wet to see if I would like to do it. And then the next year it doubled and then I got the goats. I mean, the goats pretty much set the tone. All right, let's go. Let's go. 
Let's go, goats. Come on. Go look. Come on. I grow a lot of material on site. Bamboo, we, I cut it so that we can use it as ink pens. Flowers, of course, are always painting. Collecting seeds to make seed bombs. A lot of it just really survives on its own, like a big circle. Everybody has a job, and then it all kind of ends up in the same pot and grows something new. I often tell the kids, we are good citizens in this place. All of this belongs to all of us. The ownership is everyone's. One of the things I like about the kids from City Yard Farm is that they leave feeling successful as an artist, not as a soccer player, not as a, anything else. They leave confident knowing they learned an art technique and how to see. Was, I think to be an artist, you really have to know how to see. They're so much fun. They're so lovely. They're so smart. They teach me all the time. It's fantastic. Learn more about Joan's artwork and about City Art Farm at cityartfarm.com. Seattle has a robust jazz scene. We feature lots of great jazz musicians on ArtZone over the years. And it turns out that there is a local brick and mortar school devoted to teaching jazz at all levels. It's called Jazz Night School. And here to talk about it is the founder, executive director, and aspiring jazz pianist, Eric Hansen. Hi. Hi, Nancy. So great to see you. Thank you. So Jazz Night School turns uh, 10 this year, right? Yes, yes it Well, did. congratulations Thank on you. that. Thank you. Um, you know, starting a school, creating a school from scratch is a very big endeavor. So what was the impetus to even do this from the get-go? It was a music I loved, mm -hmm. and I discovered that there really weren't opportunities for adults to especially adults, to, to learn this music and pursue it and get skills. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of people who want to do it. Tell me a little bit about the Jazz Night School students, because who are you trying to get? Um, we're trying to get anybody who wants to do this. We have all kinds of ages and folks from all walks of life. You know, as we get into adulthood, we often have to do things that we weren't planning to, yes. to, to make a living. Yes. And giving uh, up dreams sometimes. Dreams, uh, but their dreams are hard to give up. Mm -hmm. And so we want the people who uh, have the dreams that they're, they're not ready to give up, where it's time to get back to them. We have people from beginning to advanced, people who maybe are just literally just coming out of music school mm -hmm. and continuing their advanced studies. Mm -hmm. And we have people who all their life wanted to play drums and they are 60 and they're gonna do it. Oh, I love and that. Um, they are. Um, now your instructors, I wanna hit on that because I know a lot of them are working musicians. You've yeah. got some really heavy hitters. Sunday nights start with Stuart McDonald, Monday has Jared Hall and Jay Thomas and Samantha Boschnack. And these are all and, Seattle? Yeah, all Seattle people. musicians, um, Jovino Santos Neto. Oh, that's a huge thing. Yeah, yeah, and other folks who aren't big names who are really great instructors. What really matters is that there are people who want to be helping people learn of, of all levels and, yeah. and can come to it with respect for for every, where everyone's at. Mm -hmm. So 30-ish uh, um, offerings at the school, uh, yeah. classes and ensembles. So tell me a little bit about what people sure. can take. Well, most people want to want to be playing with yeah. others. Right, and, and, hands on. Yeah, right. and, and, and the community, you know, it's, it's right. getting to know folks and, and doing things with people. And so small ensembles are, are, are what we have mostly. But we do have a variety of things like Latin salsa ensemble mm -hmm. with Julio Haudegui and hot club jazz, trad jazz. Um, trad jazz. Which trad jazz, traditional, traditional jazz, jazz, like mm -hmm. old. Um, Dixie. Yeah, kind of a little post uh, Dixieland. And, yeah. Uh, Dave Loomis is, is, is a great musician who, who arranges and, and instructs for that. Yeah. So most people want to be in, in that kind of environment, but we do have classes that really just focus on skills, whether it's ear training or, or learning more about theory or, um, you know, the, the nuts and bolts things that most people 
don't makes actually you, want to do. It makes you tired. I'll quote Julio. Um, Learning music and music life is, is really a lot of tedium. 99% of getting the skills is, is, is not It's glamorous. just doing it and, the, and just practice, practice, practice. Yeah, and so, so what right. we're trying to do is, is really help people understand what those are mm -hmm. and give them ways to, to do that um, that aren't necessarily the traditional um, academic mm -hmm. uh, music school uh, ways, but are ways that, that uh, really work. Also, vocal people. There's vocalists. We do. We classes, have right? uh, we have offerings for vocalists. Um, singing with jazz trio uh -huh. is um, is really popular. Do you do you sing? Do I sing? Um, kind of. Can you scat? No. no. <laughs> No. You're not gonna. Will you try right now? No, I won't try right now. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for asking, though. Well, um, yeah, I just want to give you the opportunity. <laughs> okay. No, it, it was my one chance. Well, I'm um, so. If, uh, I'm not really into five-year plans. Okay? okay. But looking forward into whatever future, how, what do you see happening with the school, or what would you like to see? Well, um, the, we have, as you mentioned, we have our, our own space mm -hmm. um, on Rainier Avenue, yeah. and that space is going to, to become more and more um, utilized. We, yeah, we have room to easily double all the offerings that we have. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that we can do really well is, is respond to what people are, are, are needing or wanting mm -hmm. um, and develop things. Um, for example, we, we have a lot of piano players and guitar players, and guitar players can go into hot club jazz because you can have multiple guitarists, but piano players don't have a place to go. Mm -hmm. And so um, at the start of this last session, we decided, okay, we're going to have a jazz piano lab cool. and pulled it together in a week's time, and we have Nelda Swigat teaching that, who's a wonderful pianist, and we are, are proud about the fact that we can, you can be make things quick up. can quick on your feet, yeah, you know? Exactly. Right, right. How many pianos in that, by the way? There are four students. Oh, how cool. Of, yeah. All right, well, I, I, I'm so thrilled about the school and finding out about it this summer when we, when yeah. we were talking. Um, it, I didn't know about it. It's yeah. super cool. Um, I, I love that you're doing it. And thank you so much for coming and chatting with us. So um, I want everyone to know you can experience a few Jazz Night School ensembles live and in person December 5th, 6th, and 7th at the Royal Room in Columbia City. Yeah. Also, the school's top big band called Big Band Blue, which I believe you directed, That's yes, uh, performs every quarter uh, once or twice. Uh, and all that information, plus the full schedule of classes and ensembles and all that, is on their website, jazznightschool.org. All right, my friend. Well, here's to aspiring musicians. Thank you. By the way, I don't think you're an aspiring pianist. I think you are a pianist. I think you're being a little bit, you know, self-deprecating. That's kind of your way. Okay, thank you. I'm Lutheran. You are Lutheran. Lutherans are kind of that way. Yeah. Don't call too much attention. And this is the beautiful, the effervescent Shana Shepard. Hello. Hi, Nancy. I'm so glad that you guys are here. Why don't we start out by introducing uh, your compatriots, and we'll go starting on this side over here. Okay. Well, this is the illustrious Matt Williams on the guitar. Hey, Matt. And then beating it down is Knuckles in the back. Right on. And then we got John Lemon handling the bass right here. Handling it very well, and work, it has a new bass because yeah. the other one is gone, but the new one is here, and we're happy about that. Yes. yes, we're very happy about that. <laughs> uh, so 2016, uh, August, right? You guys came together. Had any of you played together before uh, as a band, or did you all come together for the first time? Well, the guys have been together for how long, I think? Two years before that. Two years before years. that, a couple years. Uh -huh. But they've been playing. They played with a group before, Bear Axe, and then that group fell apart. Mm -hmm. Sorry about it. Um, oh, well. And then they stayed together and kept making great music and then invited me to join them. So. Well, that was a great move on their part. Uh, wow. Yeah, very much so. Um, so I, I love on the band, on your Bandcamp page, you, you describe the music in a variety of ways, and, and I like this, merging a unique brand of storytelling with the low-lit grit of the Seattle grunge movement or scene. So grunge was like 20 plus years ago. Um, 
How would you describe the Seattle music scene now in 2018? Wow. Um, I guess I would say that Seattle music is more varied now. Mm -hmm. um, in my experience, and we all play with a lot of different types of groups, lots of different music. Yeah. Uh, there's different uh, communities when it comes to it, and it seems like rock, the rock scene isn't really the most bolstered one. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, we combine a lot of soul music, um, elements of jazz and funk, things mm -hmm. that are really, really current Seattle mm -hmm. into what we have kind of all grew up listening to, which is grunge music. Right. So kind of gives it new life, I think, I yeah. hope. <laughs> uh, absolutely. You know, I love your interpretation of it very much so. So you have an EP. It came out last call. That was in earlier this year, 2018, right? Yeah. New single coming out in December. A new LP that you're working on with Jack and Dino, the great producer. That's going to come out when? The L LP. I'm pushing. I'm putting we're, you on we're the hoping, We're hoping for March. March, okay, March 2019. We're, we're, we're hoping we'll be looking for that. Um, so I know you're going to play us a couple of a brand new songs, Yeah, I think. these ones will be on the new record. Oh, cool. Okay, and what are we going to hear first? Our first song is called The Final Fade. The Final Fade. All right. Well, Bear Axe, are we ready to do this thing? Are you guys ready? Yeah? yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah? Ladies and gentlemen, Bear Axe.
Keep up with all things Barax, including the drop date of their new single at barax.bandcamp.com. Hi, I'm Sarah Hurt, and I am excited to be curating this week's calendar of events. We're starting out by taking a little trip to Bainbridge Island for their annual artist studio tour featuring eight studios and 59 artists. I like to think of Bainbridge Island as Seattle's pastoral neighbor to the west and find it to be rich with hidden artistic gems. The three-day event is free and it's self-guided so you can enjoy the art at your leisure. Explore Bainbridge Island this weekend, December 1st and 2nd from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. And for more visual art, South Park Arts is inviting us to their Art Under 100 event. For over a decade, they've been dedicated to supporting and promoting artists in the South Park neighborhood. From paintings, paper, to jewelry and woodworking, you can experience something wonderful at every turn. Check it out, Saturday, December 8th, from 2 p.m. to 8 p.m. at the Seattle Design Center. Photography is an art form that is easily consumed and widely appreciated. Currently showing at Photographic Center Northwest is a show entitled By the Book, Nine Plus Designers. The show examines photographic books as a marker within the medium's canon and features over 100 photography books curated by nine designers. You can enjoy this show now through December 13th. And I am thrilled to tell you about my event, the fifth annual King Street Makers Market. Showcasing 50 different makers from around the Pacific Northwest, our holiday pop-up shop brings together the work of incredible artisans and is a great place to pick up gifts for everyone on your list. From jewelry to pantry items, ceramics to leather goods, you will enjoy discovering really special one-of-a-kind items. Located in Seattle's vibrant International District between Maynard and 7th on South King Street. I hope to see you there this weekend, December 1st and 2nd, from 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. Thanks, Sarah. Before wrapping up, we want to congratulate the Seattle Opera on their almost finished new home. Located on the Seattle Center campus, this state-of-the-art facility includes storage for 50,000 props, space for wig preparation and creation, three multi-purpose studios, and 20,000 square feet dedicated to community programming and education. The grand opening takes place Saturday, December 15th from 2 to 5, and will feature tours, musical performances, and a Seattle opera sing-along. And that is it for us. Thanks to Georgetown Stables and to you for tuning in. We'll be back soon with lots more great local art. Have a great week. Lord, I never tried it.